Hi, welcome to chapter 4, section 5. This is our last reading from the oceans chapter, so resources from the ocean. Today we're going to talk about how do people use living resources from the ocean? What are some non-living ocean resources? What are the sources of ocean pollution? Now we're going to talk about aquaculture and nodule. Okay, when Europeans began sailing to North America, they were astonished by the huge number of codfish off the, its eastern coast. Sailors reported that this area was so swarming with fish that they could be taken not only with a net, but in baskets let down and weighted with a stone. Others reported sailing through schools of cod so thick that they slowed the boats down. This cod fishery stretched from Newfoundland to a hook of land appropriately named Cape Cod. For more than 400 years, the seemingly endless supply of king cod supported a thriving fishing industry. But starting in the early 1900s, it became clear that the cod population was decreasing. With the price of cod rising, there was more competition to catch fewer fish. In 1992, the Canadian government closed the fishery. Okay. So this is where most major fisheries are located near the coast. Okay. Most major deposits of offshore oil and gas are located on continental shelves. Okay. So let's look at the living resources in the ocean. Cod are just an example of a living resource from the ocean. How many other kinds of seafood have you tasted? Tuna, shrimp, flounder, lobster, clams, squid. Um, Let's see, sorry if you couldn't hear me, I'll check on this in a minute. Um, squid, oysters, seaweed, or mussels. Did people depending, depend heavily on fishes and other ocean organisms for food? Ocean organisms also provide materials that are used in products such as detergents and paints. Harvesting fish. Many kinds of fish are caught to be eating. Anchovies, pollock, mackerel, herring, and tuna make up most of the world's catch located in the world's major fisheries in figure 19 you can see that they are located close to coasts nearly all fishes caught are harvested from coastal waters or areas of upwelling these waters contain nutrients and plankton on which the fish feed if you use wise if if used wisely fisheries naturally renew themselves each year new fish are born replacing those that are caught but only as long as the fisheries is not overfished Overfishing causes, causes the supply of fish to decrease. Better technology has enabled people to catch large numbers of fish very quickly. Sometimes the fish can be caught faster than they can reproduce. When fish reproduction decreases, there are fewer and fewer fish each season. Eventually, the fish in the fishery may become very scarce. That is what happened to the cod fishery we read about earlier. These farmers are raising catfish and fenced in areas near the mouth of the Mississippi River. Aquaculture. A fish stock decreases aquaculture. The farming of saltwater and freshwater organisms is likely to become more common. Aquaculture has been practiced in some Asian countries for centuries. Aquaculture involves creating an environment for the organisms to help the, help the organisms thrive. Nutrient levels, water temperature, light, and other factors must be controlled. Oysters, um, abalone, and shrimp are successfully been farmed in artificial saltwater ponds and protected bays. Even landlocked regions can produce seafood using aquaculture. For example, salmon are now being raised in Nebraska's fields that once were cattle ranches. Other ocean products. People harvest ocean organisms for many products besides food. Algae, as an ingredient in many household products, its gelatin-like texture makes it an ideal base for detergents, shampoos, cosmetics, paints, and even ice cream. Sediments containing the hard pieces of diatoms are used for abrasives and polishes. Many researchers believe that other marine organisms may be important sources of chemicals for medicine in the future. Non-living resources. In addition to living organisms, the ocean contains valuable non-living resources. Some non-living ocean resources include water, fuels, and minerals. Water. 
who have read how fresh water can be extracted from ocean water using desalination. Desalination provides fresh water for many dry areas and islands. Fuels. The remains of dead marine organisms are the source of another non-living resource. The remains sink to the bottom of the ocean where they are buried by sediments. As more sediment accumulate, the buried remains decompose. Over hundreds of thousands of years, the heat and pressure from the underlying layers gradually transform the organism's remains into oil and natural gas. As you know, many organisms live in the part of the ocean above the continental shelf. The thick sediments on the continental shelf bury the remains of living things. As a result, the richest deposits of oil and gas are often located on the continental shelves. Oil rigs like the one shown in 21 drill ro in the rocky ocean floor as much as 300 meters below the surface. Imagine trying to dig a hole in the, the concrete bottom of a swimming pool while standing on a raft, in, raft floating on the surface of the water. You can see why drilling the ocean floor is very difficult. Ocean drilling is made even harder by strong currents, winds, and violent storms. Minerals are solid substances that are obtained from the ground and the water. The fresh water is removed from ocean water. The salts that are left behind are a valuable mineral, mineral resource. More than half the world's supply of magnesium, a strong light metal, is obtained from seawater in this way. The ocean floor is another source of mineral resources. From the sediment covering the continental shelves, gravel and sand are mined for use in building construction. In some areas of the world, diamonds and gold are mined from sand deposits. Metals such as magnesi manganese are accumul also accumulate on the ocean floor. The metals concentrate around pieces of shell, forming black clumps called nodules. Nodules sometimes occur in waters as deep as 5,000 meters. Therefore, recovering nodules is a difficult process. The technology to gather them is still being developed. Ocean pollution. The ocean is a self-cleaning system that can absorb some waste without permanent damage. But dumping large amounts of waste in the ocean threaten many marine organisms. Most ocean pollution comes from the land. Although some ocean pollution is a result of natural occurrences, most pollution is related to human activities. Natural occurrence. In some pollution is the result of weather. For example, heavy rains wash fresh water into an estuaries and into the water shore. The surge of fresh water pollutants the ocean, pollutes the ocean by lowering its salinity. A sudden change in salinity may kill ocean animals that are unable to adjust to it. Human activity, sewage chemicals, and trash dumped into coastal waters all come from human sources. Substances that run off fields and roads often end up in the ocean. These substances can harm ocean organisms directly. The pollutants can also build up in the organism's body and poison other animals, including people that feed on them. Trash can cause serious problems to air-breathing marine mammals are drowned if they get tangled in fishing lines or nets. Other animals are harmed when they swallow plastic bags, bags that block their stomachs. Another major threat to ocean life is oil pollution. When an oil tanker or drilling platform is damaged, oil leaks into the surrounding ocean. Oil is harmful to many organisms. As figure 22 shows, oils from a spill can coat the bodies of animals that live near the spill. This destroys their natural insulation and affects their ability to float. Oil is also harmful to animals that swallow it. There is a natural cleaning process that slowly takes place after oil spills. Certain bacteria that live in the ocean feed on the oil and multiply. It takes many years, but this bacteria can eventually clean an oil-covered oil beach. Of course, oil can cause much damage to an area in that time, so people often help to clean up large spills. Protecting Earth's Oceans Who owns the ocean and its resources? Who has the responsibility of protecting them? These are the questions that nations have been struggling to answer for a hundred years. Because the world's ocean is a continuous body of water, there is no boundaries. It is difficult to determine who, if anyone, should control portions of, the, of it. Nations must cooperate to manage uh, and protect the oceans. The United Nations has established different boundaries in the ocean. According to one treaty, a nation now controls the first 22 kilometers out from its coast. The nation also controls the resources in the waters 
or on the continental shelf within 370 kilometers of shore. This treaty leaves approximately half of the ocean surface waters as high seas, owned by no nation. Ownership of the ocean floor beneath the high seas is still under debate. Other international efforts have resulted in cooperation aimed at reducing, o- reducing ocean pollution. Examples include the establishment of marine refugees, refuges and regulations for building safer oil tanks. All right, here's your last homework. I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.